Ever since I stumbled across photographs like these ones when I was in high school, I've wanted an 1890s sweater. These were used generally for bicycling or for some sort of sporting occasion, so they weren't necessarily formal garments. They were kind of how sweaters are today. They're more casual garments or sporting garments. But I've wanted one for a long time, and I finally convinced my mother to make me one. So we found a pattern on Ravelry. I'll link the one that we used down below. And she started started knitting. She's very excited about starring <laughs> starring on a in a video on my channel. So she started with work on the torso. Interestingly, this footage is not sped up in any way. My mother just naturally knits this quickly. Now I've finished the front and the back body of the sweater. And I'm going to move into the next phase of doing the shoulders with the, the buttonholes. And you can see the waist pulls in in a nice Victorian way. And the way that I did that was I used a smaller needle as well as decreasing some of the stitches from the, uh, the bottom. And yeah, so now I'm going to work on the shoulders and the buttonholes. Then ensued some knitting on the sleeves. So the puffy sleeves are about halfway to the elbow now, so I've got about the same amount again to go. And we're trying to decide if this um, stripes should go all the way down, which we're deciding they should. So that is what we're going to do. It's kind of a hassle because now I've got, I have six balls of yarn <laughs> to manage. And so every time I turn it, they get twisted up. So I have to stop every few minutes to untwist them. So I was hoping we could stop striping, but Adelaide and I agree that it needs to be striped all the way to the elbow. I mean, it would look stupid if the stripe stopped halfway down the puff. We want a fully striped puff. <laughs> one must always have good puff in one's sleeves. After this, the sweater actually was finished, but it was way too big for me in the torso area. The sleeves fit me fine, but the torso area was way too big. And sweaters at that time were not really like sweaters today. Sweaters today are supposed to be kind of baggy, but if you look at illustrations from the time and at photographs of, of originals and extant garments, you'll see that they're much more closely aligned with the current fashions. And that means being fitted. So they're, they're much more fitted than sweaters are today. So the painful decision was made for my mother to rip out the entire torso section and start over. Well, here I am, take two of the sweater that I finished, but then had to completely take out, except for the sleeves, take it all out because it was too big for my lady of the tiny corseted waist. So I had to take it out and make it smaller. So here we are, knitting again. Luckily, this time I am measuring more carefully using um, Maria, who is Adelaide's, uh, what's it called? Dress form. Dress form. And so that's very helpful to have to measure. And so here we are. I, it's always kind of discouraging to have to pull out a whole, whole sweater, but hey, what else am I going to do? I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Torso take two went along much more quickly than torso take one, I think because there just wasn't as much of it to knit and also mum kind of had a better better handle on working with the pattern by that time. So 
in just a few weeks, we had moved on to assembly. So I'm almost finished. I got one sleeve on and I just have to get this next sleeve on and then put some buttons on and then we'll be done. I'm trying to make uh, the sleeve is bigger than the arm sky or whatever it's called. So I have to um, give it a little, what's that called? Pleat. I have to do a little pleating there. But uh, yeah, that's it. Almost done. <laughs> and just like that, the sweater was done. However, I did do a few things to it that weren't in the original pattern, but I thought were kind of necessary. So I'm going to show you what those were. When I initially wore it, I found that just the stitching here wasn't tight enough. So the sleeve kept on wanting to fall down until the poof had kind of like flattened or straightened itself out. And this would be hanging way past the end of like my tips of the tips of my fingers would be about here. So what I did was to sew a strip of elastic right underneath the sleeve puff on the inside. And you can see it's just done with these little stitches. I just did a few stitches onto the elastic, cut the thread, went over, did a few more stitches. Cause if I'd had the thread connected, like connecting each of the stitches, then it would have hindered the elastic's ability to stretch. So I did this and that just gives the sleeve the ability to really just kind of hug my, my elbow and that keeps it from sliding down. The collar and shoulders were supposed to also open and close with buttons and the original pattern had buttonholes here but I found those to be completely unnecessary and also inconvenient since they kept on unbuttoning themselves so mine is just completely sewn up and these buttons are just decorative and I can just pull it on over my head. Another thing that kept on happening was the sleeves. The sleeves are very heavy and what kept on they kept on pulling on the shoulders and pulling the neckline open like this. And I did not like that. So what I did was I just wove some silk ribbon. You can't really even see it. I just wove some silk ribbon around the base of the collar. And whenever I wear it, I just tie it into a bow and that pulls the shoulders up. So the shoulder seam, Maria has, uh, narrower shoulders than I do but so the shoulder seam right here right here sits right on my shoulder rather than sitting down like it is on Maria so those are just the few little things that I did that were either not in the original pattern like the elastic and the ribbon or that just made sense to do in the moment like the buttons but I am very thrilled with this sweater for watching. A huge thank you to Mary Royal, Kit Kat Stitch, and Sandra White for supporting this channel on Patreon. If you would also like to support this channel on Patreon, there will be a link in the description. There will also be a link to my Instagram down there if you want to follow me there. I'm so glad that you watched, and uh, if you want to see more videos, then be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.